Hi again, everybody. This is Joseph with another session of actually a test preparation video for ASC. Those of you who are taking the automotive electronics test exam. Uh, I came across actually a diagram that gives the most symbols, popular symbols used in automotive. So study these because this will definitely come up on the test. You have to know symbols, automatic. And these come up all the time in every schematic that we have used. Next is a page that you have to know how to interpret the colors. You'll see the abbreviations they'll give you. For instance, W, you have to know is white. Uh, LBL, light blue, you can figure it out. GY is gray. They'll give you this, they might give you this, truth table, and you have to figure it out, the abbreviations, which is not that hard. Now let's get to the real part of the, of the test. So I'll give you questions and answers. If you are prepared well, you should do, you should do pretty well on this. Here in front of us, we have a schematic. One is for a 2.4 liter, the other one is for a 3.1 liter. Now, <clears throat> as we've been going over, and this is a pretty simplified one compared to those we've been using, the fuel pump motor. They give you this on the test. First of all, what is this symbol of? A relay. When they're not gonna have this printed over here like it's printed over here, so you have to know this symbol. You have to know obviously this symbol. Powertrain control module, what is that? It's a computer. Now, the questions. When will this motor be activated? The pump be activated? Technician A says, right now the way it is. Technician B says, when the relay, the coil is magnetized. Who's right? Technician B. Partially right. It takes two things to magnetize this, to get this motor going. First of all, it's true that you need to magnetize this to get current to flow to magnetize this. That's true. Then the contacts will be pulled in. You have current flowing through this. Correct. What do you need over here? 12 volts. You notice it doesn't have 12 volts here. So... If they ask you on the test, where does the 12 volts come for this? From this module. When this module is ready, when you turn the ignition key, it senses a signal that says, okay, we have to start the fuel pump. It senses it, gives this 12 volts. Sometimes you'll see the computer give this the ground. In this case, it gives it a 12 volts. How much is the voltage at this point over here? Let's say that's a question. Well, the answer is 12 volts. When this is closed, how much is the voltage across here? 12 volts. How much is it over here? Zero volts. Now, let's go to the 3.1 liter. Same question. What activates this? This and this and the computer. Computer gives it 12 volts. This will react. This will react 12 volts across here. Now, let's take a, a look at another one, the starter motor. And switches, believe me, switches will be on the test. You have to know switches. Now, I'm going to show you something. And to even show you, this is from a Chevy. Even the, the, the schematics of diagrams sometimes make mistakes, as, uh, as surprising as it is. Let's see if you can find the mistake. And if you find the mistake, you're good. We know that, this, the, that a battery, right, negative goes to ground. Look at this symbol right here that they have. There's a mistake here. Can you find it? They have the positive going to ground and the negative going to this. Completely wrong. The larger one, the larger line is positive. The smaller line is negative. It should be reversed. Here's an example. Then I found some. Look at this, see? This is correct. 
negative, the small one goes to ground. The larger one goes to the circuit. That's a mistake in the diagram. If you knew that, you're good. Now, a battery has 12.6 12, 12 volts, roughly, right, when it's charged. How many cells are in the battery? If you count it, you'll count six. Six cells make up a battery, each one being 2.1 volts that we went over. Now, in order to activate the starter motor, what has to happen? And the last this. Look at the switches. In which position does this motor, start a motor, which position does this have to be to start the starter motor? Technician A says, it could be in any position. Technician B says, no, it has to be only in start position will start it. Who's right? Technician B. Let's look at it. There are no connections here to accessories, to lock, to off, and in run. The only position you have one is in start. Now, in this diagram, it doesn't show you the other connections that go to accessories, but the accessories go to the lights. But for this situation, to start the motor, it needs to be in the start position. Now the question, come to this. If I have an automatic transmission, which switch am I dealing with? Technician A says this one. Technician B says this one. Who's right? Technician B. If you look at it, there are two paths. A slash T, M slash T. Now, if you don't know the abbreviation, if you don't know what MT stands for, all you have to do is look at this. There's a clutch. That means it's a manual. That gives it away right away. A, T is automatic transmission. So when I asked you which one is for automatic transmission, this is the correct answer. Okay? Which position, we said has to be in start. Which position does the transmission switch have to be in for the, for the starter to be activated? Now, technician A says it could be in one, two, or drive. Technician B says it has to be in park or neutral. Who's correct? Technician B. If you notice, again, there are no connections. Whenever you see a switch, think of one thing. Where are the connections? That completes the path. There are no connections to 1, 2, and D, or reverse in this one. Therefore, no current can flow. The only ones that are are park and neutral. We went from start, automatic transmission, either park or neutral, to get current to flow through these windings, these solenoids, partially to the starter. What happens when that, when, when that happens? This is pulled in. Contacts are pulled in, right? The solenoid is activated, switch, the contact is pulled in, and now current flows to the starter motor. This is called actually a pull-in uh, a winding, uh, and then a holding uh, winding. So pull it in and I'll hold it in. So therefore, as this is gain, you'll see this will pull it in to the starter motor. So this is what has to happen. This has to be either the parker or neutral. If you said that, you are correct. Now, how much will I have over here? Technician A says, if I go to the starter, I'll have 6 volts. Technician B says, I'll have 5 volts. Who's right? The answer is neither of them. You'll have on the test where you have A, B, C, and you can have a choice, neither of them, both of them. In this case, neither of them. Why? 12 volts over here, right? And we always use 12 volts, but when you start the engine, remember the alternator is working. So you're going to have about 13.5 to 14 volts when you measure accessories or lamps or things like that. But for, for our sake, we always just use 12 volts and you understand the, the meaning of it. Current is flowing here. I don't lose any voltage drop here. Don't lose any voltage drop through this switch. Don't lose any voltage drop here. A little. I don't lose any voltage drop from here. Right? The voltage goes here, 12 volts. All right? Now, this drops here. This drops here. Now, 
this being in this position will give me 12 volts right from the battery. So I should measure 12 volts to the starter. Okay? Went over this one, you went over this one, you went over this one. I hope you're doing well so far. An alternator. What does an alternator produce? AC or DC? Well, let's delve into it. Let's look at the schematic. First of all, show me the fusible links. Where are the fusible links in this diagram? The answer is this one and this one. Now, of course, on the exam, they're not going to tell you fusible link and fusible link like here. Right? You have to know these are the symbols. Which are the uh, regular or general fuses are this, the sine wave type. If I want to go to the path of the 2.4 liter one, which path do I take? This one. This one. If I want to take the path of the 3.1 liter engine, which one do I take? This one. This one. Right? We asked the question on the exam. Output of the alternator, AC or DC? The output of the alternator, it is an AC generator. It gives out AC, three phase. It is rectified, means it is changed. Rectified means to change to DC by these six diodes over here. Now there is a regulator here also to control the output of the voltage. To keep it constant. If they ask what's the function of a regulator? To keep the voltage constant. Or, or current constant. In this case the voltage. So you want about 13.6 to 14.5 or something like that. Why? Because you're going to put accessories on. When you put the lights on. Or you put the uh, computers on. Or you put the... Um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 what's it called? Um... If you're going to put the compressors on, the air conditioning on, it's a load. Anything in the load might pull down the voltage. A regulator over here, solid state regulator, will maintain it. Try to maintain it and try it in your car, you'll see. So, what controls the output of this? That's the question. You see over here, power chain control module. Sounds familiar? We just had it before. That's the computer. The computer senses the loads that you turn on the compressor the lights again it will activate the output of the of the alternator to the stator to to uh, produce more current more current over here will produce more dc voltage so the output of the alternator is dc why do we need dc because the battery is dc so we have to charge the battery with DC. Question, how much do we charge the battery from the alternator? Technician A says 12 volts. Technician B says, no, we have to charge it with a higher voltage. Who's correct? Technician B. You always, when you charge something, you always charge it with a voltage higher than the thing that you're charging. If the battery is 12 volts, we have to charge it more with a higher uh, 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 value of 14 volts or 13 volts okay so i hope that's clear to you okay go over it hopefully you understand that part okay two more diagrams a horn circuit again relays where is the horn relay in this i have it written right here but on the test it won't this is the relay. See how it doesn't change the symbols? Never changes. Which are the speakers? The horns. These are. Actually, the horns. Which, what is this switch? Normally open, normally closed. This is normally open. When I activate, when I close it, by by pressing the switch on the, on the steering wheel, I'm closing the switch. I'm activating the clock spring. What does that do? That allows current to go through this coil. This is pulled in by the green. And now current flows through the horns. Turning on the horns. Two horns. Question. How much should I measure over here at the horns? When the relay is activated. Remember, we didn't lose any voltage. So, 12 volts. Either one. Can the circuit work if I only have one horn working? Technician A says, no. Technician B says yes. 
Who's correct? Technician B is correct. If this one is not working, I can still have current going through this one. Okay? Now, let's go to one more before we go to the next one. Simple circuit. Reverse lights. Again, which position do I have to have this switch to light these bulbs? Technician A, put it in one or two. Technician B, put it in neutral. Who's right? They're both wrong. Neither are right. Has to be in reverse. Look at the diagram. Reverse. That's why they call reverse backup lights or reverse. Question. How much voltage should I measure? As you see, I'm, Ill, I'm running all these things in, but on a test, it's not going to be written in. But to make it easier to you visually, 12 volts, no voltage drop lost across the switch or the fuse, 12 volts. Okay? So if you, ha if you go to the bulbs, they have connectors. If you take out the connector, you should measure 12 volts. Now, how do I measure the voltage? Remember, put a voltmeter to measure voltage. Positive will go here, negative will go to ground. How do I use a voltmeter to measure a bulb? Always put it across the component. That's a key question. Always, across and parallel. If I wanna measure current, where would I put an ammeter? Here, right here, the total current flowing. One bulb doesn't work. One bulb doesn't work. I come over here, measure 12 volts over here. Still have 12 volts. If this switch is in the wrong position, it's in D. Will I measure 12 volts? Technician A says, yep. Technician B says, no. Who's right? Technician B. You cannot measure 12 volts if this is in this position. If the fuse is blown, how much should I measure at this point? Zero. 12 volts here, zero here. If the fuse is blown, how much should I measure across these bulbs? If I take the connectors out and I go to these bulbs and I have a fuse blown, how much would I measure at the connector? Forget about the bulbs with it uh, uh, connected. I actually, I go and I measure zero volts at the connectors. I go back and I say, okay, is this working? If this switch is working, how much should I measure here? 12 volts. How much should I measure here? 12 volts. Okay? That's a question on the test. Okay, I hope you did well on this. There's another one over here, much more sophisticated. And again, much more and more and more sophisticated. So anyway, I wish you good luck, those who are taking the test. Please subscribe to my other channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph, and my other channel, Joe Electronic Schematics. You'll see plenty of transistor circuits, Ohm's Law. Please try to go over Ohm's Law. Remember, you have to know the relationship between current voltage and resistance I, I went through it on the other video how they are related very important for the test very important okay know the grounds if this is connected to ground i measure zero volts here when it's not connected i measure 12 12 volts okay very important okay thanks for watching see you in the next video for this one and this will this will be a complicated one